Hello, and welcome back to the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. This is Penny Sansevieri and Amy Cornell. And this is kind of a weird, it was, it was topical, and so we decided we wanted to cover it. But this is the reason that I sort of, you know, Amy and I were talking about this, and the reason that I kind of pushed that I really wanted to do this. And as Amy and I were talking about it, we really realized the importance of it is that Romance Writers of America has filed for bankruptcy and it's largely due to, there's a whole a bunch of different factors. We're going to spend a ton of time on it. Back in 2020, you can look it up. They had some bad stuff happen. They had 9,000 members at the time. Now they have 2,000. They're trying to rebuild. They had a lot of people cancel their membership and they were a mess for a while. Right. Um, and they were they've been, you know, they spent a lot of time I mean, it was all, it even made like the national news, which was rare for um, for, you know, writers organizations. Part of the reason for the bankruptcy is not necessarily due to that 2020 event, although, you know, losing members isn't helpful, obviously. Um, there have been a number of really bad hotel deals like I think they owe the Marriott. $3 million or something. So they're restructuring, like they're not going away. They're restructuring um, because of bad deals that were negotiated well before 2020. Right. So, but the issue is, and the reason that Amy and I both felt strongly about talking about this is that, you know, for a long time, so first off, RWA in its hit, so Romance Writers of America has done a lot for, like they've helped to negotiate better contracts for, Uh, romance writers. They've helped to bring the romance genre sort of out of um, the dark recesses of, you know, I'm going to read this book and, you know, in my room, somebody's like, oh, you're reading romance. You know, there was a time when it was like this whole stigma of the bodice, you know what I mean? The Harlequin bodice ripper kind of thing. So romance, romance writers of America really pulled that they, they are, they have a lot, they had a lot to do with really changing the trajectory of the market and dealing with Amazon. And there was a time when somebody from RWA would call Amazon and Amazon would pick up. I mean, not just like the KDP people that you and I deal with, right? I mean, they would, you know, um, they had a lot, they, they made a lot of really positive changes. And that's what the majority of reputable writers organizations do. And I think that my concern and our concern collectively is we really do not want these organizations to go away. I mean, you may be listening to this like, why do I care about a romance author organizations? Like, I get it. But the ripple effect of this could impact all of us at some point. We, as as writers, we need these organizations. We need organizations like, you know, Crime Writers of America, uh, Mystery Writers of America, the Children's Society of Book Authors, and I'm not getting that title exactly right, Authors Guild, um, Florida Writers. I mean, we need these organizations because um, – For years, like 24 years ago, I spoke for Romance Writers of America and I actually promised myself I would always go to their conferences because they were one of the only ones that had many dedicated marketing tracks, like not just one as kind of like a throwaway, many dedicated tracks, whereas a lot of these other conferences were like, let's talk about character development and let's talk about, you know, and all of that's important. But if you don't have marketing, like if you don't teach authors marketing, like they're just going to show up as newborn authors in the world and not, you know what I mean? And be lost. Right. I know it's very true. Like I think definitely, and I've been to a couple of these Penny goes, Penny goes all the time. And so she really sees this in action, but I think the education portion, like you said, Penny is invaluable. Uh, Definitely. I know working, you know, directly with a lot of our authors on their campaigns this industry is complex. There is so much to know and so much to understand. And, you know, there's only so many podcasts you can listen to, so many blog posts you can read. Being there in the presence of other authors in front of author influencers and leaders in the industry really does hit different. And I think what these are also really, you know, really valuable specifically for 
you know, genres. Like Penny, you go to a lot of genre specific concert uh, conferences. Mm -hmm. And I think authors can potentially learn so much more about what makes their readers tick, what's working, what's not working. And you're not going to get that information from just reading up on things. There is something to be said for being immersed in that environment and with other authors that are specifically looking to reach the same type of people you're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I think just the synergy of the synergy of, you know, sitting down and realizing that you're not alone, right? That everybody, you know, the majority of authors that go to these writers conferences are facing the same challenges that you're facing. And I think that in and of itself, and, you know, you also build, I mean, you know, one of the things that a lot of, and this is per- pretty particular to genre conferences like Thriller Fest and Romance Writers and, and whatnot, but they tend to build relationships, like lifelong relationships with other writers. And this is really how many authors have built their success is on these relationships and networking and things. All of this stuff is really important. So we don't, you know, in a digital age where like everything and like, and I teach a lot of Zoom classes and I get it. I I, I don't not enjoy teaching Zoom classes, but I really love teaching in person more. I mean, I, I, I got to teach at Inker's Con recently, which I've always wanted to go to that conference and it did not disappoint. It was super fun, other than the fact that it was 400 degrees in Dallas. But that aside, <laughs> it was a really fun event. <clears throat> there was every single track was marketing, some form of marketing, which was great. And you get this, I mean, you really get the synergy with other, you know, writers there and talking about what you do and how many books you have out, or you have a new book coming out this year and listening to some of the challenges from some of the other authors and learning from those. I mean, I think there, you cannot, you can't emphasize that enough. So it is really, I mean, part of the reason for chatting about this is the fact that it's really on us to make sure that none of these organizations go away because we, we as authors, we really need them. Um, and even if they don't, you know, even if they're not necessarily about advocacy, even if they're more about, you know, just bringing people together once or twice a year for a conference or something, I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to meet other people and you never know what kind of, you know, what kind of amazing ideas that you walk away with or, um, the connections that you make. And like I said, in some cases, the, the lifelong friendships that, are really helpful. Right. So, yeah. So anyway, we didn't want to spend a ton of time on that, but I just think that, you know, if you haven't attended a writer's conference recently or thought about it or like, Oh, I don't have the time, you know, it's always, it's not inexpensive to get on a plane these days. Like I get it and hotel and yada, yada and everything, find something locally, find something that you can drive through, drive to. Um, We had a couple of, you know, and it, it bums me out because we had a couple of, um, writers conferences in Southern California that have gone away in the last five years. I mean, we were really, and they're a lot of work. Like I'm not, I would never take on running a writer's conference because I would both I and Amy would probably run screaming from the room because it's mind numbing the amount of work that (laughs) these folks put into to getting these conferences off the ground, but we really have to support them. Um, We have to support them. We have to support these organizations Get your, whatever organization appeals to you, sign up, pay your membership dues, support them in some way, because we, we really need them and we need them for the future. So I, um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. We always love getting listener feedback, reviews, and please share the show with somebody that you think um, could benefit from it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.